Hi everyone, welcome to the Sugar and Crumbs kitchen. Well, John and I popping up in the kitchen again. Um, I'm going to show you how to make some shortbread. So good morning, John. Good morning. Hi everyone. So after after working from a six till uh, just gone seven in the warehouse last night, half past six you were there, wasn't it? So gone 20 past seven, I think it was, in the warehouse last night. Then shot over here, did a Facebook Live. After the live, John shot off to bed. Um, because he has to be back in work again this morning and then um, he's back here doing a live and he's going back to the warehouse and it's all fairly giddy um, but anyhow lovely to see you the weather is fantastic isn't it and um, so I hope you even though you are all having to stay at home hope you've all got your windows open I plan to have a good spring clean tomorrow with John he's so excited aren't you it's not happening <laughs> yes it is we're going to get all our I garden meant, I, meant, I meant to have that conversation before <laughs> I, I am not spending Saturday in the shed. <laughs> I'm going to clear our shed out, I'm going to get our garden furniture out, and I'm going to power wash everywhere. So that's what John and I will be doing this weekend. Let us know what you're doing this weekend. Uh, I think John is praying for rain, but it's happening. So um, so I, what I thought I'd do is I'll come back and do a quick live using the um, flavoured icing sugars to make some delicious shortbread biscuits. Let's get that out of the way. This recipe is so easy. And you know, it's just a shortbread recipe that we adapted just to use our flavoured icing sugars. For those of you who don't know how to use the flavoured icing sugars, um, basically on the back, it, back of every packet is the recipe website. There's also a little recipe, like on the back of this packet, it's the buttercream recipe. On the back of, back of these packets, it's the ice cream. On the cocoa powder, it's how to make chocolate brownies and buttercream. So there's just some different things. I can't remember what's on the back of the um, winter packets. Um, and also we have a recipe website, which is sugarandcrumbsmixingitup.com or .co.uk, whichever you prefer. Or you can go to our website, sugarandcrumbs.co.uk. At the top, there's a tab that says recipes. And um, anyway, so there you go. So John, what's going on? We ain't doing the shed. We ain't doing the shed? No. <laughs> no way. You can see behind the it's, camera, he's huffing and puffing it's there. It's been a long week in the warehouse, and there's no way I'm spending my Saturday in the shed. But anyway, uh, we've got a good audience. We've got 90 people watching so far, so good morning, everybody. Yeah, fantastic. That's nice for an early start on a Friday morning. So I just want to say some other things that are going on. So John and I have been talking about how we can keep you at, where am I? Looking Down here? Yeah, just... Oh, should we look over there? Yeah. Should me and you talk and communicate over camera angles, John? No. See, what happens with John is behind the screen is he's not really watching or paying any attention to what I'm doing. He's reading the comments. And uh, like with most men, they can't do two things at the same time. Can they, John? <laughs> well, at least I'm reading the comments. You are? Two months ago when we had sport on the TV, I was catching up on football scores. At least I'm reading the comments now. <laughs> Good. I suppose that is positive, isn't it? Um, so anyhow, so I was talking to John and Laura in the office today and Maria. So it's really funny because we're all at different points and having to have a chat with them. And yet we have got a few lives that we're going to repeat, but we've also got a few lives that we've actually never shown you. Now, we were invited Emily Coyle over a few weeks ago. So as you know, she was here in the kitchen. Now, when we bring people in from a long way, we also do a pre-recorded live. And we do that as a bit of a security backup, just in case anything goes wrong. Because if they go away and they cut away and then they can't get back, something could happen, you never know. Um, you know, we've got a, um, a backup. So anyhow what we did with Emily when she was here a few weeks ago the following day we actually did pre-record and um, I didn't want to release it at the time um, so I think I did a live on the night when she was coming in because the whole world was falling about falling down about you know shouldn't have anybody here shouldn't have anybody in your kitchen shouldn't have anybody in your house it was all going a little bit bonkers and I just thought I'd confuse the living daylights out of you if Emily was here and um, well she couldn't get here anyhow and then I thought if I put the recording up then you'd be even more confused and how would I be able to explain it to you but she made a bunny butt cake and I really think it would be sad that if you didn't see that because it's such an easy thing to make and it would be lovely if you wanted to bake it and bake it for your grandchildren and then you'll have to find a way for your children to pick it up you know all this social distancing thing put it on the box on the doorstep and because uh, you are allowed out okay you're just not allowed to be hanging around in groups you're not allowed to be going around touching people but you are allowed out you are physically allowed out your house but you just can't be 
going off to the park for all day and having picnics in groups and stuff. So you are entitled to go and drop your cake off and leave it on your neighbour's doorstep. Um, so don't worry about that or on your on your family's doorstep and give them away from the window. You know, and I think those types of things are nice. And we do need to remember there are celebrations going on at the moment people do have birthdays people are having weddings still even though that they can't invite everybody they're still going ahead with them and um, you know they're, they're down to five people at their wedding six people it's really quite sad a lot of people have had to cancel they don't even know if they're going to get that money back but what concerns me is cake makes everybody happy and i think it's nice to give cake to family still. You know, you've got a little girl, little boy at home, the little birthday party's been canceled. Well, what a nicer way to still give them that cake. You know, mummy and daddy can still give them the cake and they can do FaceTime with the family and they can blow out the candles a hundred times. So when they phone their grannies or their aunties or their friends, you know, what? let's relight the candle again. You know, let's not put misery on the children at the moment, let them have their cake. And also elderly people as well, what's wrong in dropping them some cake off? There's nothing wrong. You know, we're dropping cake off to the National Health Service. They're loving it, the nurses. You know, they're, they're really happy. The police are happy for donations as well. I'm not trying to tell you to go running in and all of you go mad, but don't feel guilty by making a cake and dropping it off. That's what I'm saying to you. Don't, you know, don't feel guilty. Don't feel somebody's gonna go mad because you've made a cake. You are actually allowed to bake, providing you registered, okay? So let me just get that in. Providing you are registered, you can drop cake off to local places for the general public. If you're not registered, you can still make cake, but you can only give it to your family and friends, yeah? So just let me make sure that's clear. So if you want to give it to the police or the National Health or to people you don't know, or you're selling cake, you can't do that if you're not registered. Only if you're registered. You can do that if you're not registered and you're just a hobby baker and you just bake for family, then that's how it is. You can only bake for family, but that doesn't stop you making your granddaughter's cake, your son's cake, your niece's cake. That doesn't stop you doing that. And you know what? Let's not deprive those kiddies. Um, I mean, I was supposed to be going to a wedding on the 12th. That's been cancelled. One of our admins, it's her little girl's birthday on the 12th. My son's 40th on the 2nd. You know, we're all meant to be having a family dinner. We've all got celebrations, haven't we? We've all got things to do with family. So, you know, it would be nice. I'm going to make my son a cake. I'm going to drop it off on his doorstep. He's got two little girls and his niece staying with him. You know, they're going to have a great time, aren't they? You know, they'll FaceTime me and thank me for that. So, you know, let's try and be a little bit happy and positive in what's going on at the moment right so shortbread so let's get on because i can see john doing the coil um i made these last night and i used these make made these using the karen davies molds now these are the new karen davies molds and um, these bright colorful ones here are sugar paste so we're looking down now john we okay are. so the biscuits are in the background there and then i made these with uh sugar paste Pulling forward you a little bit and are we zoomed in? We John? are zoomed in. Because I watched last night's live and I think you were 100 miles away, you know, John concentrating on the camera again. So um, so we're going to zoom in. Um, now I painted these in quite vivid colours, but you can make them softer if you want to. Um, so this is all sugar paste. Now normally I use Karen Davies sugar paste because it's fabulous, it's lovely. It's a firmer paste, it's got Tylo in and it's great. But if you haven't got um, Karen Davies paste in, use your normal sugar paste or Tylo, and we sell a product called Tylo on our website. And I think I was telling you about it. Um, should we go back over to this camera, John? Yeah, it's just, so, just, just a question in what do you mean by registered? That means that you've set up as basically a home based business yeah. and you've contacted your local authority and they have come round, met with you, and probably inspected your premises. Every local authority does things slightly differently, but yeah. you would have to contact your local authorities, tell them that you want to be a home-based cake-making business, mm. and then they would advise you then what the next steps mm. would be. So that, that's what registered means. Yeah, John and I are always, uh, we don't want to get into the war between the professionals and the hobby bakers, so let's make that very clear here. Um, as far as we're concerned, we're a cake baking business and a cake decorating business. And we know that people like to home bake. And I'm all about baking for love and baking for family, um, you know, and baking because I want to bake. I bake because, you know, sometimes you just want to, don't want to watch TV, you don't want to do any work. And I just want to be in the kitchen and make something that's quite nice and tasty. Um, 
But if you're that type of baker, a hobby baker, and you haven't registered with your local authority, you cannot sell cakes, all right? You really can't sell cakes. Um, it's not for me to come and tell you that, but that's the way the law is. But you can give cakes away, all right? But only to family and friends. So you can't be giving them to the school, you can't be giving them to the NHS, you can't be giving them to the police, you can't give them to anybody in the general public unless you are registered. Because when you're registered, it means that you filled in all the paperwork, your kitchen has been inspected, and the local authority know that you understand what allergens are, you know what all your, all your best before dates are, you know that best before dates is things that you, t is, is, um, Best before dates is not a gone off date. There's a use date, there's a sell by date, and there's a best before date. They know that you understand all those things. They, they know that you understand the cleanliness. They know that you understand what you have to do if you're making cakes for people with gluten free. They know that you understand all those things or you should understand them, okay? If you are registered, then you can still make cakes for sale. You're entitled to still make cakes for sale. There's no rules to say that you can't, okay? But what you have to do is you have to go out and you can't deliver it by yourself. You can take your husband with you, but you can't have all your friends in. You can't be there displaying it on the table um, in close proximity with other people. So you have to arrange with your person who's bought your cake where you're going to drop the cake and how your payment's going to be paid, which should be by the bank, yeah? So let's not get into that, okay? I'm just letting you know that you can make cakes. But we're gonna make shortbread biscuits today. We're gonna to make them nice and easy. Let's get back to the shortbread topic, all right? Because I'm just encouraging you to bake. And if you're not sure, phone your local um, environmental health officer. Right, so this is such an easy recipe. And all we're going to do is, you're not even gonna believe how easy this recipe is. Um, so all you're going to do is, put um, sugar into the bowl. So we're gonna put the sugar in. And if I remember right, let me just get the recipe for you because I can never remember the amount of ingredients it is. So it's seven ounces of sugar, which is 200 grams of sugar, okay? And then we're going to put in softened butter, but as per usual, I have over softened it. So I've got liquid butter, but that's not to worry because to be fair, we need it soft anyhow, so it'll just save me on the whipping time. So if you ever over whip your butter, okay, uh, over microwave your butter, which is what I did, I did it last night as well, make sure you keep stirring it. So stir it back in, don't allow all the oil from the butter to come to the top. Just keep stirring it back in, it'll be absolutely fine. And we're gonna put it on the beater. Can you see that there on that camera? Is that food mixer? No. Right, okay, just one second. So we're just going to, can you see it now? Yeah. Right. So we're just going to stir that in. So I'm just going to put it on low. So we're back over there. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to put it on low because I don't want the icing sugar flipping up in the air. And, and to be fair, you don't even need a mixer for this, if I'm really honest. If you make your, but if you soften your butter accidentally as much as I have, you only need a big bowl. And uh, probably with hindsight, I should have just shown you how to make it in the bowl. So all you're going to do is put your butter and your sugar in the bowl. So now it's incorporated, so let me just turn it off. So you'll see that it's incorporating. And then what we're gonna do is, we're gonna turn it off. So while that's on, I'll just go and whisk an egg, just one second. Anyhow. So just run through the ingredients that are currently in the bowl. I will do. And then the other thing is, if you're not making cake, go and clean the shed with your husband. <laughs> you're so excited about it, John, aren't you? It's not happening. <laughs> so yeah, it's happening. Mm -hmm. hey, let me tell you now. Crack on, crack Let's on, see it. who wins this battle. Never mind, crack on. Enjoy yourself. Hey, yeah, you'll be enjoying yourself as well. John loves cooking. Hey, absolutely. If you leave John in the kitchen, he's there all day cooking. Loves it. Ask him to do anything else. Just doesn't happen. I'll take some pictures. Unless it's pouring down with rain, that's the only time it's not happening. Right, okay. So in in the machine, okay, so what we've got, and you can put this in a bowl as well. 
So what we're gonna do is, is that you've got 200 grams of softened butter. Now I always use unsalted butter, but you can use salted if that's your personal preference. And 200 grams of flavored icing sugar. And the flavored icing sugar that we're using at the moment is our special one. And if you haven't got it already, you want to get it. We're using the sticky toffee pudding one. So um, we're using that. Now the sticky toffee pudding and the um, apple crumble, let me just see. So John, do you want to just get this on the overhead for me, please? Right, okay, anybody who buys these, uh, there's a 50p donation going for Help for Heroes. So everybody who buys one of these, we know exactly how many we put into, the, into our stock management system. And then when they're all sold, we'll be sending a donation for Help the Heroes. Now, Help the Heroes was meant to be um, having celebrations on the 8th of May. Can we go back over here, John? So uh, Help the Heroes was meant to be having lots of celebrations on the 8th of May. And as I said to you previously, it's really sad because they're probably all going to have to be cancelled now. Um, I hope not, but it's looking like it probably is. Um, and... Um, Hopefully they'll be able to do it a bit later. Um, but anyhow, that still doesn't stop us raising money, still doesn't stop other people raising money. So um, like I say, this is our little way of doing something for them. Yeah. Is this um, the Karen Davies recipe for shortbread? Yes, it is the Karen Davies recipe for shortbread and we've adapted it with our flavored cocoa powder, uh, flavored icing sugars. And I have to give Karen a credit there. Yeah. So basically, it's just a very easy shortbread re recipe. And um, if it does have a nice, let's, uh, should we break the unicorn's head off? Let me just see. Let's get the microphone there. So it has a nice snap as well. So are we over here? So when you... No, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so it has a nice snap. Did you hear that? You probably wouldn't hear it, but you could, you could see that it's got a nice snap on it. Do you want me to do it again, just to be sure? Should I get it in front of the microwave? Uh, microwave in front of the microphone. But you can see it's got a lovely snap on it. And I will tell you, John was scoffing these last night for fun. Which camera are we on? How many did you eat last night, John? Uh, Don't be saying you didn't, because I watched you. Two little ones. There was a full tray there, actually. Mr. Liz? He doesn't really, only because I made it look like a full tray. <laughs> Right, okay, so we've got in the sugar, we've got in the butter, so I'm just gonna give it a bit more of a whisk. Beating an egg. And then we've got 400 grams of uh, plain flour, okay? So we're going to add half the flour. You on the overhead there, John? We are, yeah. So we're going to add half the flour. We're going to add the egg. Let's get rid of that. Let's get that on. So I'm just going to pulse it because I don't want to get the flour all over the place. I'm going to incorporate that until it becomes a dough. Can you see? Can you see? It becomes a dough. That's off. Right, let me get this out. So let me just move these out of the way because we're going to have a little play with these in a minute. Oh, Laura's just put the recipe up for everyone. Oh, actually, brilliant. Yeah. Good. Good idea. Good girl, Laura. So let me just get the dough off the uh, off the bowl here, off the blender. Scrape it down, make sure it's all incorporated. 
guess Allison's just asked, are we still selling and delivering? Yes, we are at the moment. We are still selling and delivering, okay. Um, do you know, that needs to tell you something as well. You know that we were getting bread from the wholesalers across the road. Um, I think I told you last week they made 80 people unemployed, which was really sad. And um, we don't actually have an account with them, really. But um, anyway, we bought some flour and some caster sugar and stuff off them. But um, it looks like they're no longer going to be here, which is really sad. So at the moment... Yeah, last night on the live, we said that we were getting more flour, yeast, sugar in stock and it was due for delivery today. I went over today and basically there was nothing there and it looks like they are closing down tomorrow. Yeah, I probably say so. it doesn't look like, I'd say it definitely is. Let's just, I don't know who's watching the program so I just have to be a little bit careful, but it, let's just say it's all very sad at the moment. So um, anyhow, so we've got the dough with half the flour in, okay? And then we're just gonna pop the rest, of, put it on top of this mound of flour. Now, once we've made this into a dough bowl, you can do two things with it. So you can make it into a nice big dough bowl. You can put it into the fridge straight away and uh, leave it in the fridge for half an hour, or you can do what we're gonna do, okay? So a lot of people actually put it into the fridge for half an hour, wrapped up in cellophane, um, cling film, and uh, not, not cellophane, cling film, and um, then they take it out and roll it but we're actually going to use it straight away. So you'll see that, just going to fold this in. So when you watch Emily's live, you'll see that I haven't mentioned this pink board to you much. So a lot of you have noticed that I'm using this pink board. And uh, what are you doing? It's just popped up that Boris has tested positive. Oh my goodness. Mm. So no one's, no one can escape. Yeah, what about the uh, the guy who was with him? I know they were doing social distance, but they've all been talking to each other, them lot, haven't they? Mm. Oh, goodness me. Right, anyhow. Um, so this pink board, I didn't mention it because we were going to release it sort of like after Emily's live. Um, and I've sort of kept it secret, but um, anyhow, with Emily not coming, um, we didn't, so I just sort of give you a big, a, a sneaky preview. But it is on the website. It is the most expensive board on the website, and John didn't know about it and nearly had heart failure. And it's because I've had it specially made for sugar and crumbs. Um, I've just got to adjust the size because um, I didn't put in the correct size. It's actually bigger than our biggest green board. So uh, I will go and do that afterwards. Laura keeps emailing me and saying, will you tell everyone it's a lot bigger than uh, well, I wouldn't say a lot bigger, but it is bigger. And um, and the reason it's so expensive is one, because it's been made specially for sugar and crumbs. Nobody's got this one. And two, the cost of it is uh, the colouring. So pink colouring is actually very, very expensive. Um, so there you go. But I like it, don't you? I like it better. I love my green ones. The green ones are still up there. I love my green ones. There's no problems with them. But I now save them for guests. So that guests can, well, not chop on them because you know how I look after my boards. But um, anyhow, no one can use this pink one but me. Right, okay. So if you're a bit of a control freak like me, grab your pink one. Then they all know it's yours. Right, so as you can see, we've moulded this in. And you've got to keep moulding it in until it all forms a nice ball. So don't leave any bits on. It will all go. has got it as well. Prince Charles, goodness me. So how many people have we got watching John? We have got 191. Fantastic so, Friday morning. It is fantastic turnout for Friday yeah. morning. So hello to everyone. So is anybody watching us for the first time? So if you are, let us know. Let us know where you're from. And the other thing is, if you are a newbie, the rest of our audience will tell you. Uh, John and I are a married couple. We own a company called Sugar and Crumbs, as all our regulars know. 
um, and we like to have a little bit of banter in the kitchen, albeit that can be hard when it's just John and I. Doesn't always have a sense of humour where I'm concerned. Do you love? No doesn't always pay attention to the camera. No. I'm actually looking at you now and I actually don't know which camera we're on. Oh no. John, are you winding me? Which camera are we on? Right, so are they not watching this being moulded in then? They have been, they've been, I've been flipping between the two. Right. So when you've been speaking, then they've been watching you. When you haven't been speaking, they've been watching some you moulding it in. I can't wait till Laura comes back. Laura. <laughs> nor, nor, nor can I. <laughs> I, re I really need Laura back in the kitchen. <laughs> we need Maria back. We need everyone back. <laughs> Basically anybody but me. <laughs> Absolutely. John got the sack and he's had to come back. Kills me. <laughs> no wonder he scuttles off to bed early after he's done a nighttime live because he knows he's going to get it in the air when I've watched it. Right, so you can see now, we formed a ball, everything's all in. Now you don't have to do it on this work, on this top, you can do it on your own worktop. These boards are brilliant because they're non-stick, so you can roll out your sugar paste on them and everything. I've got some people, Karen, like Karen from the office, um, like she won't, she won't uh, do what I do and rotate, trust it. She insists on still putting flour on the board. Um, I had a lady here the other week, I might, I might be sure, it might be sure, it might have been even Emily, who just threw loads of flour on the board. I'm like, you just don't need to. Right, so here we go. Then we'll get Karen Davies mould out. Well, we've got Samantha from Wolverhampton. She's new, so welcome, Samantha. Yeah, hello. <laughs> so I'm not going to do all these. I'm just going to do a few of them because I want to do some with sugar paste as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to get a corn flour pouch. We sell these on our website as well, but they're now in like um, little um, little craft box boxes now, aren't they? They came in white recyclable boxes, recyclable these are. Because we yes. did have them in plastic plastic ones, then we've got them in these white ones, and then we put them in brown ones now. So, um, the, this mould I'm going to tell you about. John, can you have a look under that camera now, please? This one? Yeah. yeah. Is that microphone in the way, by the way? Uh, yeah. So, all we're going to do is, yeah, so we're going to tap it in. We're going to tap in a couple of others. So this is the new unicorn mode by Karen Davies. There's the big horn. Um, we'll tap in a couple of the leaves. So we'll just do one or two of each of them. We'll do a swan here. So you don't need to put the dough in the fridge, no? No, yes we do, but not yet. Okay. We're going to do a rose, a large rose. And then we'll do the ham. So we'll do... another Jillian's another newbie, so welcome. Yeah, we'll do that little one there and that one there. Right, so you'll see now that I put corn flour in them, okay? And then what you have to do then, do not leave all that corn flour in. So uh, we need to tap it out. So Johnny, you on this camera? Mm -hmm. So what we'll do is we'll tap them out. Tap them out. If you're just giving them a dusting, tap it out. Let me get my cloth, just one second. Get my cloth, get all this out of the way. So all my moulds are prepared now. I'm gonna get our baking sheet. So you can either use a baking sheet with greaseproof paper, you over here, John? Yeah, so can you have a look here? Mm -hmm. So you can use a baking sheet with greaseproof paper. You can use your, get um, um, an oven tray in the oven, you do. You, you know, you'll get a big oven tray, so you could use that. Um, we sell these cookie sheets, which are brilliant as well. So you could lightly grease that if you wanted to. These are non-stick, but I haven't tested them yet. So um, I'd probably put a very, very fine layer of um, grease on or some um, parchment paper on or greaseproof paper. I'm gonna use these. So let's just get those ready there. Yep, here we go. Can you see what we're doing here, John? So we've got our dough. Mm -hmm. And then you just get your dough, pop it in. Mm -hmm. 
just makes your biscuits a little bit more interesting. That's all. And the kids love them as well. So there's your dough. There's number one. You know, you, could, you don't have to do you don't have to do all of them. You could just keep doing loads of the same. So we'll do a little horn. So this is the new Karen Davies um, mold. Yeah. Now, when you get her mold, she does include a recipe. Now, she doesn't put our recipe in, and she did say to me, "Look, Carol, please don't think I'm not adding your recipe." But her molds go around worldwide. So, which camera am I on? So her molds go worldwide, and uh, our sugars are not worldwide. So she has put a recipe in there um, for everybody to use worldwide with her molds. Um, and some people love it and some people prefer ours all down to personal choice but we like to show you this one so basically we've just adapted her recipe to include our flavored ice and sugars and they pop out really easy so I have, I've just broke one just one second let me put that back in there again so one must concentrate on one what one must is doing just one second so don't worry if you break it Let's put it all back in again. Got Caroline from Hertfordshire, it's her first live as well, so Ooh, welcome. Hello. So normally we don't do lives for you newbies on uh, during the week. We normally do them on um we normally do them on Monday nights at 8 p.m. and on Thursday nights at 8 p.m. And sometimes we prop up, we pop up with a little impromptu one. Um, just before all this mess started, I was going to start doing three lives a week, which which was going to include a Wednesday morning one on product testing. But um, I can only really do that if I've got guests in because, you know, it's hard work trying to work full time, get back home here. And because there's only John and I in the kitchen now, I've got to pull John out, the, out of the office. I've got to pull me out of the office. There's preparation before. So, um, so now we're just... Uh, I broke this again. I really mustn't chat while I'm talking to you. What is it? The problem with doing two jobs at once? Yes. Sorry. <laughs> it's... <laughs> back then did it <laughs> right let's move on are, are the cornflower pouches refillable yeah you, yeah, you could them refill them yes yeah, yeah. yeah you have to just break, just break them apart that's all and then refill them but only put a tablespoon of um corn flour in. we put a bit we put in more than that we actually filled them up with 100 grams full of uh, corn flour you can put as much as you want in but i would say if you're going to try and fasten them back up i probably just put a uh, a very large tablespoon in. So I've moved on because obviously I'm struggling here. So this one here is the peony. Now this peony mold, I've just found a load in the warehouse yesterday. I must have overordered from Karen, and um, so I've just put them on offer. I've actually taken given a, a two pound discount. So just one second, a moment. Yeah, Mo, well, us men, we we. We are actually able to do more than one thing at a time, but uh, we like to keep it quite quiet. Oh, well, we know you do. We would just get a load more work to do. Yeah. <laughs> if, that, if that became widely known. I remember uh, talking to John many years ago, like, why doesn't he do things in the garden? And why doesn't he do that? And like, John doesn't do any do I whack, do it yourself stuff. So he said, well, the thing is, Carol, if you do it and you do it well, you get asked to do it again. So the best thing I can do is muck it up the first time and you go ask me again. And basically he's worked on that method in all our years together. Quite clever, isn't it, John? Absolutely. <laughs> going to make a swan. So uh, that's the rose one, peony. So I'm just going to make a couple, that's all. So this is the swan. We're going to have to go back to that horn. Who's made the biscuit recipe? And this is something so easy to do. So if you are at home with the children, it's actually just so easy to do. One egg. And you know, if you haven't got any flavored icing sugar in, you, you know, there's nothing stopping you using um, just normal plain icing sugar if you wanted to. If, if you've got any, if you've got any flavoring, add some flavoring. But just be careful with liquid flavoring because the liquid flavoring can, uh, is a bit more liquid. So it'll make it a little bit softer. You might have to just put your stuff in the fridge for a little bit longer. So I'll just take this one out. 
work really well, I've got that one. So I'll just, I won't do them all because you can see what I'm doing. The, the reason I'm just doing this is, is one, to show you how easy to put the mix together. And two, I want to show you, somebody was watching last night and said, do you put the uh, silicone moulds, do you bake them in the silicone moulds? Please don't do that. Okay, um, you'll have a horrible mess in the kitchen. You'll ruin your mould and you'll, you'll be crying. So please just don't do that. No, you must pop them out. So I'm just gonna pop this one out and then it's done. And then we'll pop them in the fridge. So a little live, just to show you how to make these. We'll, we'll get these in the fridge to set for 20 minutes or so. Just want to do the same things again with sugar paste for you. Yeah. Oh, just knocked his head off. Right, he'll have to stay there. And I've knocked his ears off. Oh, Carol. <laughs> Carol. Let me do it again. <laughs> right, I'm going to stop brushing. because he has to get back to work I'm doing this live I wanted to try and film myself but then we realized it was going to be a disaster if I tried to film myself so it would, in fact it'd actually probably be very entertaining for you lot but I'd probably have a meltdown and start crying so um, so if anybody so. if anybody's placed an order for dispatch today and it doesn't go out <laughs> I'll put Carol's mobile up later you can give, oh. her, you can give her a call next week because yeah and just to remind you all, I did tell you guys last night that the reason, you know, we packed all our orders and we were ready for Hermes yesterday, but Hermes um, actually didn't get to collect from us. Um, we're not actually sure what happened in the system. We were told by Hermes, um, I mean, I'm not sure whether they just forgot about us. I know they're under a lot of pressure, but they, they told us that um, they are struggling with staff. Um, lots of people are self-isolating, you know, and um, there, yeah, just took a little bit more time and it was mm -hmm. done. So lots of people are self-isolating. They've got the same problems as well. They're recruiting new staff. And um, I think the wheels are falling off for the couriers as well. The couriers are under so much pressure. So, so I'm not going to do any more with this one. I'm going to wrap this one up. So, uh, so and then I'm going to roll got these out. We've got a question of why moulds instead of cutters? Well, oh, moulds... You can use cutters. You can use cutters, but I would imagine you just get a better 3D effect using the yeah. moulds. You wouldn't you wouldn't get that with the cutters? No, exactly. No, well, you can use cutters. That's what I said to you before. You know, some people actually roll roll this up, make it into a mould, and then what they'll do is they'll put it in cling film. John, which camera am I on first? Which camera was I on? Right. So... Um, yes, yeah, so you can roll it, put it, pop it, pop it into um, a ziplock bag if you want to. Put it in the fridge half an hour, and then roll it out with a cutter. Roll it out and then cut with a cutter. You can do anything that you want. There's no rules. Um, I'm just showing you a different way of using the moulds. Just make them look nice. Doesn't look great for the kids. So if you see these here, so I'll put those back under the camera. Mm -hmm. So if you see those, uh, not lovely to give your kiddies a unicorn biscuit. Oh, you know. You know, isn't that lovely to give them a, a unicorn biscuit or a swan or an Easter basket or a unicorn horn or a little duck in a basket? Is it a duck? Yep. Yeah. Or a little rainbow. Isn't that so pretty? Just another idea, isn't it? That's all. So, but of course, yeah, roll them out, use a round cutter, use a square cutter, oval cutter. You can then uh, emboss onto them as well. You know, Karen was showing you how to use the cutters last week with um, the sweet stamp cutters that we've got. We've got the latte cup. We've got, uh, you can emboss them with the little embossers so they can put it in, or oh baby, or you know, whatever else is going on. I don't know what's on all the cutters, if I'm really honest. Right, let me get the cutting film. So a lady gave me a tip about cling film, keep it in the fridge, and I tell you, she couldn't be so right. Just look at this. How great is that? So if you ever have trouble with your cling film, just uh, pop, keep it in the fridge. Brilliant stuff, brilliant. And I cut it. And then I'm just gonna pop that back in the fridge, leave it there, 
And uh, when I come to use it again, it just unrolls again, nice and easy. So I'm gonna pop this in the fridge and I'll roll this out later. I'm actually gonna pop these in the fridge now. So these cannot go in the oven now. They have to go in the fridge now for um, 20 minutes, half an hour. It doesn't matter if you leave them longer, but that, you do need to put them in the fridge. As Ellen's asked where the recipe, if you scroll back up the comments, the recipe has, the recipe link has been posted uh, a little while ago. So you should be able to see it. It's, it's on our Sugar and Crumbs Mixing It Up website. Yeah, if you go to our Sugar and Crumbs Mixing It Up website, just write in shortbread in the search bar. That's all you need to do. And then uh, there's several shortbread recipes, but go for the easy shortbread, okay? Because it couldn't be any easier than that. Right, okay, a couple of you wanted to know why would you use them all. So we're going to use one for the, um, let's use that little unicorn one there. So we'll have some sugar paste. Where is it exactly the same. Now I can't use this one because it's got cookie dough in. But uh, what we'll do is, exactly the same. So you saw me the other night, I put Tylo into this as well, just to make it a bit firmer. Um, Tylo, you don't have to, this is normal sugar paste rolling out to pop on your cakes, um, but I wanted to make it a bit firmer, so um, I just added some Tylo to it. So let's see, you on the home red there, John? So why do they need to go in the fridge? Uh, to firm up, you need to firm up the butter. Um, if you don't firm up the butter, if you put them in the oven now, the butter is very, very soft and basically it will spread. So what you want to do is make the butter firm again, that's in the cookie dough, and then when you cook it, it takes a little bit longer and they'll stay, they'll stay in shape. So if I put them in the oven right now, um, it, they'll just all merge into one. Yeah. So you'll see what I'm doing here. So I'm just putting the sugar paste, I'm only going to do it in one mould. So we'll do it in this little unicorn chappy here, lady. So anybody who watches, I'm not a professional cake decorator, okay? Um, our, ch our sugar and crumbs, um, basically John and I run a company called Sugar and Crumbs, and what we like you to do is show your products before you um, buy them. So see if you like them before you buy. Uh, lots of people watch us for a bit of entertainment. Lots of people um, who watch us actually buy off us. And um, you know, rather than just sending out fancy adverts, how all these things work great, and you lot are thinking, oh, well, I'll never be able to make that. I actually show you and want to give you the confidence that you shouldn't ever worry, really. So just something here, I'm only gonna make the one mold. So two other um the swan mould is out of stock. Uh, are they? Right. Just, well, like, just, just get Laura to check because I've just had them go back into stock. Yeah, we'll just but check I... because uh, just before I left the warehouse to come back here to do the live, we had two boxes arrive from Karen Davies and I'm assuming the swan would, would have been in there. Well, I'm hoping so. So we'll just check, double check on that. Amy's asked if we got new products in the background. So we have, um, let me finish this first. So when you're using your moulds as well, if you're putting sugar paste in, if you can't work out how much sugar paste, just do it small and keep adding to it. And I've got like a little ball there. So what you do is you just keep moving the sugar paste down. How much sugar, how much tylo to sugar paste do you use? Right, well I use half a teaspoon to 250 grams of sugar paste. Now some people might use more, again it's personal preference, okay, but I generally use half a teaspoon of Tylo to 250 grams of sugar paste. But having said that, different sugar pastes are different as well, um, you know, some of it's very, very soft. So if I was using uh, some of the Renshaw coloured sugar paste, I'd probably be inclined to put a teaspoon in. Um, but you know, just practice, because there's nothing wrong with adding half a teaspoon, pop it in your Ziploc bag, okay? Leave it for an hour, and then go back and see if it's firm enough. And you'll know it's firm enough, because when you pull it, it will give a snap, and that's how you want it. But don't put any more than that in, because you'll end up making it rock hard. So just one second. So here we go. And if you're gonna cut off sugar paste, like I've just cut off, are we over the head? 
So you know if you're right? going to cut some off, okay, use a, a blunt palette knife or something. These little mini palette knives from PME are fantastic. Uh, I wouldn't ever be out without it for anything. You know, they're just great for lifting things up. But don't ever use a sharp knife on your on your moulds. You don't ever want to ruin them. So we're just going to pop that out. There it goes. So that's that mould. So let's just go over the moulds with you a moment. Let's tell you about them. Let's, you could just... And your moulds as well, you can wash them in the dishwasher. What I do is, you can either wash them by hand or I put them face down in the dishwasher. So I put them on the top tray. So which camera are we on? Yeah. So I put them on the top tray and I face down. So John, just turn around, turn the, to the camera down. It's this one. So that's how I lie them in the dishwasher. I don't put them in the stacker like that. Okay. I actually lie them on the top tray face down and give them a, a really good wash. Um, you can also luster, you, luster these, so let me just show you with this one. So, um, so you can actually uh, luster your moulds. The thing when you luster your moulds first though, they do need a really good wash afterwards. So if you wanted to make that on there, so if you didn't want to luster afterwards, you could luster them. Let's just fix that in. So you could do it this way if you didn't want to lusty, didn't want to paint afterwards. All right, give us that sugar paste on. So any of you who are watching, if you're professionals and you'll see that I'm making a bit of a mess, then you'll understand that I aspire to the people who are, uh, who are at home who are not professionals. Um, I just do these lives just to show you how to use things. Um, I'm not a professional at all in any shape or form. I'm just doing it like you guys. You get a mould and you want to know how to use it. So uh, there you go. If Karen Davies was here, she would show you how to do this so much faster and quicker than me. And she'll uh, be able to do so many other things with the moulds, but I, I, I'm not that clever. So there we go. So we push that in. And there you go. It's already lusted. Yeah. And you can keep doing that. And can we put some more in? And you can keep doing that until it's all used up. Let's just do another one. But um, obviously, once you've lusted it, you then need to give it a good wash. So personally, I never luster before. Um, lots of people do, but I don't. I prefer to have them nice and clean, luster free, and then luster them afterwards. So I just like to get them on a bit of tissue paper and luster, luster them up afterwards. So if we haven't got any swan moulds in, don't panic. Um, I'll get some dispatched on Monday and they'll be back in stock on Tuesday. But I will be able to put them back in stock on Monday afternoon. I will have missed Karen's dispatch for today. Yeah? Right, so we've got that. Let's move that lot out of the way. Let's move the moulds out of the way. Let's show you the pictures of the wall. So the new moulds are, so there you go, John, which camera are you on? Is this one a good one to be on? This one's probably the best. Yep, you got it on there? Yep, perfect. So the new moulds are, this is the unicorn mould, okay, and it's called a cookie mould. Now you can use it for sugar paste, it's just not, it's not just for cookies. Um, Karen has decided to call a range of her products cookie moulds to encourage people to make cookies. Um, in there you get the other moulds, so you get this one. So, um, yeah, this one, I've done it there, painted it, and there is just as a biscuit. You've got the horn, uh, there's another one, and there it is as a biscuit. Um, I've got the unicorn, which is just done with sugar paste, so you'll see that. And we've got it as a biscuit. Um, what else have we got there? And we've got the unicorn there. 
and there. And then I painted one last night. Yeah, so that's a unicorn mold. Um, there you go. And then, um, and she also puts the recipes on there as well. Where are they? Just one second. Am I tidying up today? If you are, if you are so elsewhere in the world, she has put the recipe inside. Oh, wait a minute, here they are. So she has put, added another sheet inside with the recipe website, with the recipes on as well. But this is her recipe. My recipe is slightly different, okay? But um, we also know that people are looking all over the world to buy this and they can't get our flavoured icing sugars. So um, you will get that in there, okay? So that's that one. And then the next mould is, this one here is for her trailing leaves. So let me just move all those out the way there. So this one here is for the trailing leaves. Yeah, so you can see that. Now, when you when you do this, and when you do these, there's just different types of leaves in them all. Let me get them all. I'm going dizzy, mate. You'll see that John's raising his eyebrows at me. There's lots of little trailing leaves, and what it, what the idea is is that you use the peony mold or the rose mold some other ideas yeah so see the rose mold there and there's the peony one which is what I use for the biscuits that I've just put in the fridge and I've just put this one on offer so the peony mold should be 16.99 I've just popped it on sale at 14.99 so you get the big peony you get the bud peony you get the leaf in there as well so if you're decorating the cakes and then you make these and use this as your little trellis on the way down I think you can see if you've got the buttercream flowers mold there's one of them there and then you've got the rose which is there and you get a big rose a medium one and a smaller one and a very tiny one so it's quite a nice idea isn't it uh, recipes out the way and then you've got the Easter cookie mold now this is on special offer Karen's reduced this as soon as it's come out so I'm back over there yep yeah. so Karen's reduced this one as soon as it's come out simply because she didn't get it out in time so there it is there uh, is the uh, sugar paste so these little baskets are brilliant because I mean you can use those all year round for like flowers for little Mother's Day things you can put in them um, and in there is also a little rabbit with his carrot and there's a little duck I think it is chick it is so they're quite cute aren't they yeah so this one's been reduced to 12 pound And then the other one that we've got is the swan. And I think the swan is very pretty. So there it is, there's a biscuit. And there it is, I've made it with sugar paste. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Great. Now, before we go, we're done. Before we go, somebody wanted to know how to use these. So these are mini palettes by Sweet Sticks. Now this company is based in Australia. They do five little palettes. Um, we, they also do a range of paints, but these little palettes are an absolute deal, really. They're a great. We do the big ones. Let me just tell you about the big ones here. Here we go. So we sell the big ones. So if you're doing a lot of painting, um, look at those. You see those? That's the pastels colour. So that's all the pastels. How pretty is that? Okay. And then this one's the metallics. So if you're doing a lot of painting, those are on the website. So you'll just need to go to Sweet Sticks. I'll go and put them in the Facebook Lives must have afterwards. Um, but you know, there's all your silver, your copper, your bronze, your gold, you know, your rose gold up here. So these are bigger ones, but sometimes people don't want to invest as much money in for these until they've used them. They've looked at them and think, oh crikey, that might be a lot of money. So what Sweet Sticks has done is come up with some smaller palettes and these are $8.99 each. And they're really very simple to use. Put them. Put them. Can you see them? Yeah. You just need to come this way a little bit. Which way? Perfect. This way. Yeah. So there's uh, there's loads of different ones. There's a rainbow. There's I know this one is jungle. I know this is metallics. I think this one is um 
There's the well, jungle, was... unicorn. Oh, yes, there is. There's jungle, there's unicorn, there's rainbow, there's metallics, and uh, I can't remember them all, but there's five of them there, and they're all in the Facebook Lives must-haves. So what we'll do is we'll have a little play with this one, because some of you wanted to know how it worked. And how so, much are they? They're eight ninety nine. So what we're going to do is, let me get some tissue paper. So we'll just quickly paint up this little unicorn and um, I'll do it so that we're on this camera here. And, um, and these are all 100% edible, these paints as well. So uh, where's my water? Get my water, let me just get that little brush there. One second. We're nearly done, John, we're nearly done. So I know John's desperate to get back to work and um, he's got lots to do. To be fair, because we're now going to two staff in the whole building, um, you, know, we're, you know, we've had to let a load of staff go. We haven't lost them, they're just on this, is it furlock or furlough? Furlock. Yeah, furlock. So um, unfortunately our staff have got to stay at home, but we've actually brought James and uh, uh, Laura back in. Um, because John and I realised there's just no way we could run the company on our own. So uh, let me just show you this. So you get a little stick. Now the stick will be difficult to get out at first. Are we on this camera? Mm, yes. You so, just need to go, you're not quite in the middle. Um, no, all the way. And um, 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 this way. Yeah, perfect. Right. So you'll find it's a little bit sticky to get out because it's got one of those little jelly tabs in. So, uh, you know, the, those little sticky jelly tabs. So, you know, just be careful when you are pulling it out at first, just be mindful that it is stuck in there and then you can pull that off afterwards. So, John, if I paint here now, where do I need to be? You're right in the middle now. So they can see where, where you are. Right, yeah. great. Yeah. How much are the bigger palettes? Um, oh, Laura will have to have a look. I actually think they're, are they 39.99? I, mean, I might be wrong, but I can't remember off the top of my head. The bigger palettes to me are the best ones to buy, but I think these are great if you just the, want to give it a go. The bigger, are, are the bigger palette ones used with water? Yes, yeah, all water activated. So, um, and they're alcoholic free, they're suitable for vegetarians, vegans, a halal, di a halal, halal diet, kosher diet, um, and they're brilliant. So let's just have a little paint here, yeah, so. I might not get all this unicorn done, but see, I've got the water here. Are we on this camera, John? Yep. So all you need to do is just a little bit of water and they'll last for ages. They're actually really quite nice as well. They remind you of those like little uh, makeup palettes, don't they? Your little eyeshadow palettes. The larger palettes, gold and silver, are thirty-seven ninety-nine. I'm assuming they're all the same price. Yeah, I think so. So just take your time. I'm probably going to rush this a little bit because I can feel John heavy breathing. I like, get a move on because he has to go back to work, which I totally understand. And then. Um, And because they're water activated as well, they just dry back up again so quickly. You just rinse your brush in the water before you go to the next one. So we'll just do that one. Now the ones that, that I did there last night, that unicorn there, can you see him, this one? I use this palette, but I've decided I'm gonna use this lighter one for this one. So you can use the same brush. Um, while I'm on there as well, um, I bought these little cheapy brushes as well. So not very, they're not very expensive these. There's two zeros, two double zeros and two triple zeros. They're on the website as well. Yeah, yeah. they're on the website as well. And um, they're just cheapy little brushes so that, you know, if you want to use them for using your glue or for doing this or a little bit of fine detail, you get six in a pack. And you know what, I think they're about £3.25 for the six. 
So they're in the uh, must-have wish list as well. So they come in their own little individual containers. Can you see that? And um, as I say, there's six of them in a pack there. So they're really cheap if you want to use those for um, painting with. So let's do the gold. John will have a little look now. If you go to the must-haves, John, have a look how much those brushes are. When you when you first getting them wet, you have to put a little bit of water on them for a little while just to get them softened was up. Was the one done for last night? Pardon? There's none for. Oh no, there's uh, the 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 must have. Um, we didn't want to make you confused because we're going to release Emily's tonight. If you want to go to the must have, use last night's must have, which is um, the twenty six, is it? Because we're going to put Emily's on tonight. I didn't want you to have um, three three the lots of must have. Assorted. Set of white brushes, yeah. set of six, three ninety yeah. nine. Yeah, I knew they were three pounds something. I just realised I don't know if you can hear the noise in the background, but my dishwasher is on. So look, they're just so easy to use. So let, let me just turn this round this way a minute. Hopefully, you can see what I'm doing. Can you still see what I'm doing there, John? Yeah, just. Pull it a little bit towards you. Pull it towards me. two inches. Yep. Yeah, great. Perfect. So we'll just paint the wings. It's quite therapeutic. I mean, I'm, I'm having to do this at speed. It's quite therapeutic just sat here, just messing around. And you can paint your biscuits as well with these. I'll just do this. And I'm using the same brush, not changing the brush because it's water activated, it just washes up. And then I'm just going to do its little feet. I'm not going to do little black feet, I'm going to do little gold feet. I know a few of you have bought all the palettes and some of you have just bought one or two of them really in it up to you but if you are if you are only going to buy one make sure you do have some black dust in as well it don't matter which brand you have um you know we do we've got the sweet sticks paints we've got the sweet sticks powders we've got fractal colors as well so you know you don't have to use these you can use any of them but um all the other dust i think have to be um you have to use um rejuvenator fluid or re or dipping solution which is basically the same product or you can use lemon juice these are these are the only water activated ones I'm not very neat, I know I'm just rushing it, but I'm rushing it just so that we can have some sort of effect. What do you think anyhow? What's the feedback back, John? Just waiting for it to come in. Oh, I think everybody's watching mesmerized at the moment. <laughs> really? <laughs> so it's always good to just uh, I do it on a bit of the kitchen roll as well. I'll just put that back in there. So just pop a little bit of its in the holes in there. And then we'll do a little bit for his lips. And I'll tell you what other brushes are fantastic as well. The global um Artist Network brushes. Now they are a bit more expensive. In fact, they're a lot more expensive. But if you're, if you are, this is from the position. Uh, if you really love um, painting, then the Global Sugar Artist, um, Global, Global Sugar Artist Network. That's it. Brushes are amazing. And for those of you who watched Tracy Mann yesterday, you know she does say you can use any brushes. But if you really want to use the fine detail brushes buy those brushes and I've got them all on offer as well but they are beautiful and uh, I don't let anybody use them for money so keep them well and truly hidden. I'll have to find them but um, 
I've got them in a tub somewhere, but they're well and truly hidden. Go and have a look at them on the website, but they are beautiful. But you won't let anybody touch those. Those, are you, those will be your pride and joys. Right, I need to open this one up. So, you know, like I have students here in the kitchen, I hide them from them because my brushes are a mess, as my students will know. Found that they've all been dipped in the glue, they've been dipped in everything. So, uh, right, I'm not very good at doing eyes. Karen did beautiful eyes on hers. We're just going to have a, a big black eye, us. Karen did um, eyelids on hers and really nice eyelashes. I'm not very good at that, so we're just having black eyes. And then I'll just finish off its tail here. So I hope you're enjoying this live. I know it's only a quick, it does take time to set up. We do do them for free. We don't, you know, we don't charge you. And I've had to drag John out of work to get here for you. And as you know, John's very communicative, you know, keeps him in the loop with everything. That's going well, there's on. actually not a lot happening at the minute. <laughs> Just some sort of banter, John. We don't need to read the comments for banter, me and you, do we, love? But, you know, I wonder if our audience wonder if we actually ever speak to each other. We should just be chatting in the kitchen, shouldn't we? <laughs> there we go. Right, there we go. So that's my little painted unicorn. There he is, using these. And then these colours I use from this palette. Got a little unicorn head. There's this one, really very easy, just a bit of black and gold. And I actually lusted that up with a white shimmer, actually. There we go. So all those are there, so you can have a little look. So as I say, I'll put these in the wish list in the Facebook Lives must-haves as well. So if you want to go a bit mad and buy the bigger ones, then you know that they're there. There's the pastels. Uh, but these are much bit they are much bigger they will last you a very long time you're not going to run out quick with these they'll last you and you can use them for everything you can use them on your biscuits as well let's just um let's just paint there let's get the paint up so you can paint onto your biscuits as well Right, and yeah, the Swan Mold, I don't think we, we actually haven't got any more. Have we sold out? Or yeah, right, Laura, Laura, okay. Laura, Laura said that uh, you'd put everything in stock that arrived today. Is Laura, is Laura watching now? I don't know. Right, well, I'm going off now, so I, I have missed the dispatch from Karen today. So what I'll do is I'll order some now, I'll pop them into, I'll pop them into stock, but they won't arrive till Tuesday, yeah? But I'll give Karen a ring first to see if she is able to dispatch Monday because um, some people are struggling at the moment. So afterwards, I'll give Karen a ring because I need to order some other bits off her anyhow. And then um, and I'll see if she can dispatch on Monday for me. If she can, I'll pop them into stock, but it does mean your order won't go till Tuesday. Most of you order on standard delivery anyhow, so you'll be fine. So can you see how it paints the biscuits as well? Mm -hmm. So really very, very easy, yeah? So I'm just going to leave it at that. I don't think I need to do any more, do I? I'm not going to do any more, anyway. Wash your little brush out. The good thing is, with these being water-based as well, you know, your, your, your brushes will uh, dry nicely. And as I say, I've got these little cheapy brushes in. These are a pack of six. So they're in. What else has arrived? Foam pads have arrived, haven't they? The foam um, 
Mm -hmm. Foam pads have arrived back into stock. Um, you'll find that we are running out of stock of things and that's due to a lot of suppliers have actually closed down for a couple of weeks as well. So, you know, so, so a, lot of, a lot of suppliers, if they, they have closed down for a couple of weeks. And also John and I don't actually want to buy too much stock in because we don't know what the future might hold for us. You know, if they say all businesses have to close down or whatever, I, I don't know. You know what I mean? We're just, we're just erring on the side of caution at the moment. Um, I'm sure when everything's all back in great, that's be good. But I don't really want to have a warehouse full of stock and then um, find that we're having to shut properly. So at the moment, we are registered as a food manufacturing company. Um, our accreditation have actually got in touch with us. We didn't get in touch with them. They notified us. They've actually done us a letter that all our staff who are working for us at the moment, which is John, myself, James and Laura, are allowed to travel to and from work. Um, and hopefully, you know, all this thing is all gonna sort itself out soon and we can have everybody else back into work as well. So I do wish you all well. We are working hard to get everything to you. And um, anyhow, I hope you've enjoyed tonight's live. Tonight, we're gonna to go live at eight o'clock with Emily Coyle. It is a pre-recorded recording. I'm gonna pop up at 10 to eight tonight, just to remind you, because you won't get a notification. So if you don't set it on your alarm clock, you won't get a notification. But if I pop up at 10 to eight tonight, just to remind you, you will want to watch it. It is great and it was a time when Laura, Maria and I were in the kitchen, we filmed Emily and we had a really good laugh. And uh, so don't panic that uh, with anything tonight. In fact, I'll get John to put a warning up that it is a recording. So when we're not doing our social distancing, do remember it was recorded a while ago, all right? And um, on Monday, Danielle Critch is going live from her kitchen on Monday, straight onto our page. On Tuesday, Tracy Mann at eight o'clock is going live straight from her page onto our, into our, onto our page. Um, so we're, we're gonna keep you all busy and I'll be popping up with other things to do next week and I'll let you know how the shed clearing goes on, yeah? So anything we need to know, John, before we go? Uh, no. Yeah. yeah, let me just get these out of the fridge because I've not put them in the oven yet. So they've been in the fridge for 20 minutes or so. So the reason you put these in the fridge, okay, and it's why you put the dough. So if you made just the dough and you want to roll the dough out, you can either roll them out and cut them into biscuits straight away and put them in the fridge or you can actually wrap them in cling film as a dough and then roll out afterwards. I like to roll them out um, and, or put them in moulds and then put them in the fridge like this so they're lovely and firm. And the reason is, is that the butter firms up nice so when it goes into the oven and bakes, they don't spread. And as you can see, they don't spread. Well, they get a bit bigger, but they don't spread and merge into each other, yeah? Right, so that's us all done. John, is there anything you need to say to anybody? No, I don't think there's any questions yeah. that have just come up uh, in the last uh, yeah. little bit. So but thank you very much for everyone to join us. Yeah. Will we have more Easter moulds? Yes, we will get some more in early next week. Have we run out already? I've only just stocked up this morning. Definitely stocked up on Easter moulds. I think. Do you mean yeah. any other moulds from this one? I'm not sure. Yeah, okay. And then the other thing is what I was going to say to you is I found a packet of Prosecco icing sugar. So um, what I'm going to do is, is um, over the weekend, what orders come in, because I think our courier will be coming soon. I'm going to send this back to uh, back with John. What should we do with this? Should we just drop it in somebody's order? Or should we do, um, I said last night, we'll do a post, why should they win it? I'm not sure. Do you know what? I'll get John, make it easy. I'll get John to pop up a post of why you would like this bag of Prosecco. Um, it's very much sought after. It's the last one left. So let's put it up a post. We'll have a bit of fun with it, and then and then we'll 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 draw it. I'll have to draw it one day next week for you, and then uh, we'll pop it in the post here. But it's the last bag of prosecco. I don't even think any of our suppliers have got any, so it's the last one, never to be made again. Okay. So I'll get John to take a picture in a minute with it, and then we'll we'll have a bit of fun with that. Yeah. Don't forget to like and share. I know I'm not doing a draw today, but you know what? Support me all the time. You know, I do like and shares. I do plenty of prizes through the week. So, you know, still like and share this one for me. I'll be very, very grateful. And that's me done. Are you done, John? Yes. 
He'll fix my little I'm off. No, I'm off to pack all the orders now. Oh, I've never seen him so happy. Right. Bye bye. We will see you whenever. Monday. T tonight, 10 to 8. Oh, yeah, 10 to 8. <laughs> I forgot already. <laughs> I'll see you at 10 to 8. Cheerio. Bye. Bye.